Good morning. Today we're going to start our study on uh, 1 Corinthians. What an amazing book this is, um, an amazing study it's going to be. I thought today we'd spend some time kind of going through uh, a background of, of 1 Corinthians, give you a, an idea of why the book was written, um, the time period and everything like that, a little bit about Corinth. Um, so we'll start there. Uh, 1 Corinthians obviously was written by Paul. Um, I've researched it somewhere around 56, 57 AD um, was when he wrote the book. He was actually in Ephesus at the time, um, and that's recorded in 1 Corinthians uh, 16.8, where he says, I will tarry in Eph Ephesus until Pentecost. So he was still on his, I believe it was his third missionary journey um, when he wrote this uh, letter to the church of Corinth. Um, the reason Paul wrote the letter, um, he had uh, it's actually a reply to two separate letters that he had received, um, one from the household of Chloe, uh, where she was, where they were talking about uh, division within the church and immorality within the church, and then the second part of it, around chapter seven, chapter eight, um, is an answer to a letter from uh, Stephanus, Fortunatus, and Achaicus, um, and it's just answering some questions that they had um, in regards to the church and, and stuff like that. Um, you're going to find four major themes in First Corinthians. Um, Unity is a big theme. Um, Paul's going to touch on division in the church. Um, he's going to touch on immorality uh, in the church. And then you're going to get a lot of church discipline as well um, in 1 Corinthians. So it's pretty. Uh, it's a pretty great book, some great themes to it. Um, a lot's going to go on there. Um, you'll see some tone changes in Paul throughout the letter, which I think is, is fascinating the way you read it um, and understand it. So let's get a little background on Corinth itself. Um, Corinth was a very important hub during that time. Um, with its location, it was, a, it was a great commerce area between Italy and Asia, um, which made Corinth a very ethnically diverse community. Uh, you found a lot of uh, different um, ethnic backgrounds throughout the city. Um, not only was Corinth a center or hub of economic, political, and, and commerce, uh, Corinth was a hub for entertainment, um, immorality, and idolatry as well. Uh, matter of fact, when you talk about the immorality in Corinth, um, one, of the, one of the research uh, uh, pieces that I read said the immorality in Corinth was legendary. Um, it was so legendary that um, the Greek plays of that day would often depict, depict Corinthians as drunkards, and reprobates. So, um, just if you can imagine that, the uh, typecasting that went on in those Greek tragedies of that day. Um, but the Corinthians actually drew attention to their lewdness through their worship of Aphrodite, who was the goddess of love and beauty. Uh, but the amazing thing is, is you'll find out um, throughout the Bible, throughout um, everything that's been recorded about, that God had wrote down, had recorded, um, you know, he uses things and, and everything has a purpose. And Corinth was a great strategic location uh, for the propagation of the gospel to uh, show the power of God. Um, the, the corrupt nature of the city of Corinth made for a unique opportunity to display to the Roman world uh, the transforming power of Christ. So I thought that was, uh, that was fabulous. Um, a little bit interesting for me to find out um, about the city of Corinth. Uh, Paul uh, initially visited Corinth and established a church on his second missionary journey, uh, which was sometime around uh, 52 to 53 AD. Um, that is recorded in Acts chapter 18, uh, verses 1 through 18, which I'm going to, uh, I'd like to read now, just so we'll have a, that background. So Acts chapter 18, starting in verse 1. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and went to Corinth and found a certain Jew named Achilla, born in Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had commanded all the Jews to depart from Rome. And he came to them. So because he was of the same trade, he stayed with them and worked, for by occupation they were tent makers. And he reasoned in a synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded both Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy had come from Macedonia, Paul was compelled by the Spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus is the Christ. 
But when they opposed him and blasphemed, he shook his garments and said to them, Your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean. From now on I will go to the Gentiles. And he departed, he departed from there and entered a house of a certain man named Justice, one who worshipped God, whose house was next door to the synagogue. Then Crispus, the ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his household, and many of the Corinthians, hearing, believed and were baptized. Now the Lord spoke to Paul in the night by a vision. Do not be afraid, but speak, and do not keep silent, for I am with you, and no one will attack you to hurt you, for I have many people in this city. And he continued there a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. When Gallio was proconsul of Acacia, the Jews with one accord rose up against Paul and brought him to the judgment seat, saying, This fellow persuades men to worship God contrary to the law. And when Paul was about to open his mouth, Gallio said to the Jews, If it were a matter of wrongdoing or, or wicked crimes, O Jews, there would be reason why I should bear with you. But if it is a question of words and names in your own law book, to it yourselves. For I do not want to be a judge of such matters. And he drove them from the judgment seat. Then all the Greeks took Sothenes, the ruler of the synagogue, and beat him before the judgment seat. But Gallio took no notice of these things. So Paul still remained a good while. Then he took leave of the brethren and sailed for Syria. And Priscilla and Aquila were with him. He had, he had his hair cut off at Centuria, for he had taken a vow. So there we get a recount of Paul establishing the church at Corinth, right? And as we can see, Paul worked as a tent maker during the week and preached in the synagogues on the weekends, or on the Sabbath. Um, and it was Paul's custom to bring the message to the Jews first. Um, and after several attempts with no or very little success, Paul told them, you yeah, know, I'm done with you. I'm going to the Gentiles, which was often the case. So Paul turns his attention to the Gentiles, and eventually they establish the church at Corinth. Um, but some of the Jews were, were converted as well, but as you see, most of the believers were Gentiles, uh, which made the, the church at Corinth actually reflect the uh, ethnic diversity that was in the city itself. So um, you had a multinational character, and it also mirrored some of the Corinthian immorality, which can often be a problem when you let the outside influences of the world enter into the church. But what you're going to find is the sharp tone of 1 Corinthians is, it, it results, it's a result of Paul's urgency to get the church back on track because of what had happened um, in the church, the uh, immorality and the sin coming in um, from the outside world and his um, desire to bring the church back to Christ. So we're going to see a lot of, of uh, great things through Paul, through his letter to the Corinthians, um, as he answers both letters in one letter back um, to the church. So I think it's going to be a great 13 weeks. I'm excited for it, and I look forward to studying this more in depth with you. Thank you.